What's up guys? Today I thought I would show off my newest purchase. This is a Webley & Scott Mark IV pistol. It's chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson, not special 38 Smith & Wesson. Now these were used during World War II and I actually looked up the dates on uh, this revolver. I actually looked up the serial number and found it was made in early 1945. Now the pistol that preceded this was chambered in 455 Webley, if I'm correct. And they went to a 38 Smith & Wesson with this. And then Enfield started producing these. There was a whole, whole legal issue with that because Webley designed it. But anyways, I've always wanted a top break revolver. I love the concept of pushing a lever, hinging it up. And then the shells just ejecting out. I don't know why sidewinders have gotten so popular and these have just disappeared. Um, I mean, there's a couple new designs that, or new examples, I should say, that do this. There's a 22 little pistol that does it. But other than that, I, I don't know of very many modern handguns that incorporate this. And that's really sad. Uh, supposedly, it's because the action or the receiver is not as strong since it it breaks right there versus a solid frame but I've seen these things in 357 so I can't imagine they're too weak um, I've heard people say they weaken with time and then they lose accuracy what whatever maybe that's the reason I don't know but I really appreciated that I was able to go out to the range with this gun So we're shooting some PPU ammunition. It's a little lead nose bullet. Alright, so I really love the sights on this handgun. They're really easy to pick up. If you put just a little bit of white paint on that front sight, these sights would be phenomenal. Honestly, for a war production firearm, they're pretty fantastic sights. I love them.
So the rifling on this firearm is absolutely phenomenal. Hopefully you can see that on camera. And I mean, if all you're shooting through this gun is lead bullets, I can see why, but it's really deep, it's really clean. It almost looks like a brand new barrel. All right, so there's the group right here. And I was aiming higher, about that much high. So it's shooting low. I do like this gun. It shoots decent, it's just way low. All right, so one thing I noticed right away when I got this handgun was it's actually kind of hard to open the action. Now, it's all because you're overcoming this hammer. So when you hit the this release right here, it doesn't feel bad until you get to the hammer and then you have to overcome the hammer just slightly so that'll hinge up. It's kind of uncomfortable to be perfectly honest with you, but once you get it used to it, it's not bad at all. And as you noticed, as you open the action, this comes out and it'll actually eject the shells out. That's what attracted me to this gun. I love the way it looks. Actually, my favorite part about this gun was not shooting it. It was actually ejecting the spent casings out. I kept a whole bunch of them around because, you know, it's kind of fun to put spent casings in and go, whoo. I don't know. And it is fun to load it like this. Uh, the trigger on this gun is pretty heavy. The double action, woo, man. It is heavy, but I will say it's really smooth. I don't know. I've heard people knocking the trigger a lot, but it, it is really heavy, but it's smooth. So honestly, if you were to lighten that up a little bit, this would be a pretty phenomenal trigger. And then the single action is also kind of heavy, but it's not bad for a service gun. I mean, I guess I've shot a uh, Nagant revolver. <laughs> And I felt that double action trigger, so maybe that's why I'm looking at this one so favorably. But I really do like this handgun. Alright, so if you want to take the cylinder out of this handgun, first thing you gotta do is take out that screw. So with that screw taken out, you can hinge it up just a little bit. Then this piece moves, and then the cylinder will come right out. Now, one thing I noticed right away shooting this gun is uh, uh, we were shooting some PPU, I think 145 grain bullets, and it was lead nose. And Let's see if I can get this on camera before. You gotta look at that. <laughs> oh, we didn't get any slow mo footage, that's a shame. Yeah. I don't know where this is shooting. It's shooting way low. Hold on, hold on. All right, go for it. Yeah, I didn't get this shot here. Fuck. Yeah, you have to overcome the hammer. That was cool. Isn't it? I, the grip is pretty comfortable to me, honestly. But I will say, cocking the hammer isn't. It's got these serrations on the hammer, and they're not very good. I find myself slipping off of it very easily. They don't engage very well. I can do it, but I do find myself slipping. 
Honestly, it's easier to take my support hand and just cock it, but I will say the serrations on the hammer aren't great and I just tend to slip off of them. It's got a lanyard loop on it and funny enough, I own so many guns that we're supposed to have lanyard loops and I never got them. <laughs> it always made me sad. It's like it was one of those like my Mauser broom handle was supposed to have one I believe. Uh, there's so many guns that were supposed to have like a lanyard loop and this is my first one I finally got that had a lanyard loop on it. I mean I guess you guys don't really care about that but So this was kind of a impulse buy, kind of. Uh, I was going to buy a gun for my birthday anyways. I was looking at two firearms, modern firearms. Um, one of them was a AKV. It's an AK that's chambered for 9mm, made by Palmetto State Armory. So I was looking at buying one of those, and then I looked on Gun Broker, and this popped up and I immediately fell in love. I've always loved top break revolvers. I love the way they eject shells. I just, I love the way it looks. But I never got one because, you know, I always thought, well, they're kind of expensive and there's other things on my radar right now. But I found this for a decent price and I'm like, whoa. This is the part of the day you realize he doesn't give a fuck about hitting the target. You know what? I haven't done rapid fire yet. This is completely pointless. That's how fast you can waste money. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I didn't really go into depth on the history of this gun. I'm trying to limit that because I think my, my videos are more about just shooting shit and then my basic review. But if you'd like to see something in future videos, if you'd like to see more history, more information, I do know more about this handgun. So let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see more on this gun. Oh, look at that. Look at my handshake. Oh, wow. Not a great double action trigger, huh? Not very good, no. That's fun. That's my favorite part.